So the other night I was just sitting there and something occurred to me. I'm like, so Webflow has an MCP server and it's pretty great. And doesn't Figma also have an MCP server? They do. So what occurred to me was, can I just hook the two of them up and have Webflow automatically build out my Figma designs? And the results are super shocking. So I'm not going to try to clickbait you here. No, this is not going to completely replace your job as a Webflow developer fortunately and unfortunately, but it is super cool and I do think it's going to save you a whole bunch of time. So in this video, I'm going to go ahead and set all of this up from scratch. We're going to try to build out a Figma design. We're going to see what it did well, what it did wrong, and make some suggestions, hopefully for the future of both of these MCPs. Let's get into it right now. I'm going to be using Claude Code. We have these pages here and everything that I mentioned, so you can follow along, the links are in the description. Just go ahead and click that. So first things first, we have the Webflow MCP server. Server. And it gives us this code here of how we're going to install it. It doesn't give us a command for Claude code. So what I like to do is just copy this and then I'm going to go over here to Claude. You can use ChatGPT, Gemini, any AI that you use. And I'm just going to say, can you make me a command that I can use to install this in Claude code? All right. So I just ran that command. Can you make me a command that I can use to install this in Claude code? Just like that, it gave me the command. I'm gonna go ahead and copy that and I'm gonna paste it over here into my terminal. Then in the meantime, what we're gonna do is we're gonna check this out and I've already read this, but you can read this to learn a little bit more about the Figma MCP. All right, so it made a mistake. I just went back and I sent it the error that I got. So we are good to go there. The Webflow MCP is now installed. It's not authenticated. We're gonna do that in just a minute. Now let's go ahead and get the Figma MCP. So you have to have the Figma desktop app installed in order for this to work. Go ahead and open up your file in dev mode and then make sure nothing is selected. So as we can see here, you can see in the right hand side, enable MCP server. I'm gonna do that. There we go. It says it's been enabled. I'm going to copy the URL just like that. And I'm going to go to Claude and I'm going to say, can you make me a command to enable the Figma MCP in Claude code? All right. So it made me this command. Let's go ahead, run that and see if it works. All right. So it says it worked. Now let's go ahead and run Claude. All right. Now I'm going to do slash MCP to see what's running. As we can see, Figma is connected. It says Webflow is failed. So we are gonna need to authenticate this as well. Let's hit restart. All right, so I had some issues. I removed it and then I reran the command and we are good to go. So now we have this, but we need to authenticate it. So let's go ahead and click reauthenticate. It's gonna pop open a window in the browser right here. I'm gonna click approve and then I'm gonna select my site. Okay, so authentication was successful. Now I'm gonna go ahead and see if it's working. So I'm gonna go ahead and select the nav bar over here in Figma. And then I'm going to go back over here into Webflow, make sure my Claude code window is popped open. And I'm just gonna ask it what it can see in Figma first. And then we're gonna say, what can you see in Webflow? All right, so it says it can see a navigation component in Figma with the following elements. That is correct. If we pop open Figma again and take a look, we can see that it says logo over here about work and contact. So it is connected and working with the Figma MCP. Now let's go ahead and find out if it's working with the Webflow MCP. And spoiler alert, it's not going to be because you actually need to pop something open. It's like this little MCP app and it doesn't show up here all the time right away. There it is. See how it just said app install? If this doesn't happen for you, just go ahead and ask Claude, say, can you do something with the Webflow MCP like I am about to, uh, but I'm gonna pop open this app first and after that it should be connecting. Okay, so connected to MCP server. Now I'm gonna say, what can you see on my Webflow site? All right, so on your Webflow site, Figma Webflow MCP2, I can see home 404 password style guide, all that fun stuff. So. That's fine. All I wanted it to do was confirm that it indeed does have access to everything I want it to have access to. So that means it does. It has access to the Figma MCP and it has access to the Webflow MCP. So now we're gonna get this running. I'm just gonna go ahead and say, build out the navbar section that I have selected in Figma. All right. 
right, so it is done, and I did help it a little bit along the way. So this is what we're looking at right now. We can see logo over here, and something that it did actually, which is interesting, is it knew that it was a nav bar, and it actually grabbed my nav bar component, which you probably saw, and then it changed my nav bar component to match this new design. I didn't ask it to do that. I didn't think it was gonna do that. I just thought it was gonna build like a new nav bar, but it did that with the correct structure and classes of client first. I also didn't ask it to use client first. And in this video, I'm not gonna be judging it on its class naming ability. Usually I would just drag the client first documentation into the folder and tell it to reference that. In this case, it's fine. What I had to do was it kind of made an issue over here. This contact button had an underline that was moved up. I told it to fix that. It didn't, so I fixed it. That being said, we can see this right over here. And then if we go into Figma, we can see that it, you know, it looks the exact same. Is it responsive? Probably not. I'm going to go ahead and check that right now. And if not, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to ask it to make it responsive. It's not responsive. So I'm going to go ahead and just straight up say, can you make it responsive? You could probably get better results by actually telling it how to make it responsive. But in this case, I'm just going to say, make it responsive. Okay. So it says it made it responsive. Let's go ahead and see what we have on tablet. Okay, so we have a nav button, it's white. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to change that to black. Okay, so it did indeed make this nav button. Let's go ahead and go to preview and test it out and see if it works. Even if it's not, we're gonna move on from, from the nav bar, but let's go ahead and click tablet. Okay, so it opens, it's got a border there. It indeed has made me a responsive nav bar. That is phenomenal, okay. So enough here with this nav bar. Let's go ahead, select our main wrapper, and then open Figma right here. And we have this logo bar section. I want it to make this. And these are SVGs in Figma. And for my testing, it was actually able to make these using the custom element and web flow. So I want to do the same thing right here. So let's go ahead and open Claude code now. And I'm going to tell it, hey, I have this logo bar selected. Make that, make all of the SVGs using the custom element in web flow. Make no mistakes. No, I'm kidding. All right, I'm going to try that now. All right, so I've written up my prompt. I've hit enter, and uh, I just realized we didn't make the hero section. So whatever. We'll make the hero section after. For now, we're going to make the logo section. So let's let it run, and let's see what's going to happen. Okay, so it made the logo bar, it made the SVGs, and the SVGs look great. That took a long time. Like, I cut out well, just a lot of me waiting because you, nobody needs to see that. The logo bar itself looks great. And if I go to mobile, as we can see, they stack on top of one another, so it is responsive. Just one issue I see is that it's not the same width here as the nav bar. So if we look in for example, we can see that it kind of like lines up here at around the same point, whereas in Webflow right now, it does not. So I'm just going to go ahead and fix that real quick on my own. Okay, so now it's the same size. We're good to go. The logo bar looks great. I personally, as a Webflow expert, I would not use it for that because it would take me personally a lot less time to just do it myself and I wouldn't be so bored waiting for it. Uh, now let's go ahead and do the hero section. And the hero section is, I think, where things start to become worth it, even for us as Webflow experts, because if we look at this design, we can see that it is a grid with some text, with an image there, and with a button. The thing is, it'll take us a little bit of time to make this. It's a pretty simple layout. We don't have a whole bunch of SVGs with a whole bunch of context. So I'm going to go ahead now and ask it to build out this hero section. All right, so it took a couple tries and it made the hero section. And the positives are obviously the text is correct and the styling is correct. 
the gap was wrong. That being said, this hero section, I would say that it really did not go too well. It took a couple times. I had to restart the MCP. I had to restart my Claude conversation. It was difficult, and uh, it probably took about 25 minutes. And considering this is a hero section that I could make on my own in about five minutes, I would say this hero section was a fail. So, I've had mixed results using these MCPs together. That being said, we are only at the beginning when it comes to both of those MCPs, really, and there's going to be a lot of progress made. When would I use this MCP right now in a production project? Personally, as a Webflow expert, as someone who's been using Webflow for seven years, I wouldn't use this to replace my Figma to Webflow work at this moment in time, but I don't think we're very far from that. That being said, even though most of you watching this probably know what you're doing and can navigate your way around Webflow, try to think back to that version of you that was brand new to Webflow, who didn't understand Flexboxes, who didn't understand how any of this stuff worked. And take a look at what we have in front of us right now. It's not bad. It is not bad. And if I was a Webflow beginner at this moment in time, I would definitely use this to build out designs in Figma. Because I mean, hey, if we go into Figma over here, take a look at what we have, then go into Webflow, as we can see, it is pretty much the same. And if we go over here into our classes and take a look, we can see, like I said, I didn't upload client first uh, documentation or anything like that, but these classes are well done. They're well thought out. They make sense. They actually have something to do with what's going on. It's not just like div block seven, div block eight. If you take a look at this build and then you take a look at the build of a brand new Webflow developer, this is miles ahead. And so for that reason, what I'm saying is if you're a Webflow expert, keep an eye on these MCPs, test them out and see if there's ways that you could fit them into your workflow. And if you're a Webflow beginner, I would say you should be using these right now in order to help you build better sites with clearer class names and just overall closer to Figma. So I hope you like this video and I'll see you in the next one.